we continue in the 35th chapter. One word loss, so I say to do. Begin a new section yesterday in Tanya. Trying to understand the purpose of the Bainini. Why did God create you and I actually in the end? Right? We're BIT, Bainini in training. Here specifically about the Bainini, but includes us. And as we ex explained, or the alternative explains, we need to understand that the engagement that we have from within of us is not two different dimensions, two different beings in the sense there is, but that they're enmeshed together. The good, the bad, and the ugly. They're all one. Not, no, they're not all one. Sorry, that's the wrong thing to say. They are enmeshed with each other, which then would suggest that the purpose would be that the good should transform the bad and the ugly. That's what it should do. Not just merely conquer it, right? In other words, you know, a nation is battling a war. There's two possibilities that they want. They just want to conquer and control and subjugate the people. And that's usually what ends up happening. But uh, a greater accomplishment is to engage the people in such a way that the conqueror incorporates them into th the society and the world of the conquering nation. Right? That they become... Um, not just submit and not just subjugate themselves, but they become a part of because they realize it's a better nation. Now, it was not a political statement at all of current events at all, right? So no one take it right? with that, you know. Uh, tonight on the news will be, you know, um, the the 10 seconds that I just said over there and uh, all taken out of context, which is, you know, what makes it newsworthy, right? Um, anyways, um, but that's, you know, the divine soul, not merely defeating and subjugating the animal soul, which seemingly that's all that's being done. It's the divine soul transforming the animal soul now why that needs to happen is because they're enmeshed they're together in the same space so to speak in the same world <laughs> um, the inner world of us and it can't be just merely to subjugate to win the battle it wouldn't be sufficient so then what's the purpose of the bainini we're going to, that's where we're going. Today, the al will give us merely a metaphor. And we'll unpack the metaphor um, tomorrow in a full way. We're not going to unpack it today. The metaphor is based on the Zohar. The, and the Zohar gives the metaphor. Light is the, a metaphor for the Shechina, the light of a candle, right? So, oops. So the Zoyer uh, makes a comment, quoting the Yanuka. It's like a child prodigy. And says um, the following. The wise man's eyes are in his head. That's quoting from King Solomon in Kohelet's Ecclesiastics. Zoyer comments on that phrase from King Solomon. <laughs> Where else should the wise man's eyes be if not in one's head? So what is the meaning of this then? Is that a person shouldn't go four cubits, which is about six feet, bareheaded. A man shouldn't go. Why? 
because the Shrina, the divine presence, rests upon the person's head. Therefore, every wise man has his eyes, eyes meaning interest. You know, your eyes go what you're interested in, right? What you have a concern with, that's where your eyes go. And therefore, one speech is concentrated in his head, meaning that there should be light of the Shrina, the presence of God, and it should be overhead. And that's why I don't go bareheaded, right? Because the presence of God is around you, over you, um, and hence don't go barefooted, right? Continues the Zohar, this is all quote from Zohar. Now, when your eyes, meaning your interest, your concern um, is there, so you want to create this light. In other words, your concern is there should be the light of God over you, encompassing you, over your head, right above your head. So, therefore, your concern is to make sure it's there. You need oil. You need fuel to fuel it. Now, why do you need fuel? And what is fuel? Well, before that, the Zayar says that the person's body is like a wick. And the wick needs fuel to go through it in order that on top of the wick, there should be a light. That light is the light of the Shrina. So says King Solomon, he cries out, let there be no lack of oil above your head. In order that there should be a light, meaning the Shrina, the divine presence of God over you, you need this light. And what is the light? I mean, what is the oil rather? This fuel is called Maisin Toivim, good deeds, mitzvahs. Therefore, the, the wise person, their eyes in their head, right? In other words, they're always concerned that the Shekhinah, the Divine Presence, should be over them, right? Therefore, they make certain that they lack no fuel, no oil, meaning good deeds, in order to create that light. And that's the end of the metaphor. So we're not taking apart the metaphor today because that's going to be tomorrow's class. <laughs> but just to reiterate the notion here, we've got good deeds, fuel, mitzvahs, fuel, through a conduit called a wick, right? A wick, that's the conduit, and that means our body, and that's in the metaphor, our body is that conduit to create them, on top of that, the body, meaning on top of the head, on top of the wick, a light of God, the presence of God called the Shrina. So that's called a wise person. Now, here it's a wise man, but it's any person. Right, but a, a wise man, that's why he won't go bareheaded for cubits because the presence of God is over you. And for a man, a Jewish man, that is, to show the respect and the deference towards that, you cover your head. So the wise person is can always, their eyes are above them. In other words, to make certain that the Shrina, the divine presence, is there constantly, consistently. And therefore, they're always making sure that it's always mitzvahs to do in order to create that reality. That's where we're going with this. And we're going into the very nitty gritty of the details of the, here, of the oil, right? How oil needs a wick. The wick needs the oil. So how we need the good deeds, needs the body. If you notice, there's no soul over here mentioned, just the body, the, 
the mitzvahs, the good deeds that we do. And that all creates the presence of God over me. What does it mean over me? What is that concept? Um, what does it mean the light? Why is it a light? Why is it not internalized? Um, just some of the things that we will we will deal with. Why is it that I need the mitzvah to do in order to create the light of God? Is that the only way to create the presence of God? Is through the mitzvah? How about the love of God that I have? That my soul uh, it, um, experiences? If I am attuned to that, is that sufficient? These are all some of the things that we will be talking about. But guess what? We ain't talking about it today. So please don't ask me <laughs> about anything in this regard. Because it's a cliffhanger, as Davida says. <laughs> a cliffhanger for tomorrow. All right. Any questions? Can take off topic questions today. Um, uh, Rachel on Instagram, the light is the Torah and the lamp is the mitzvah. Yeah, not, that's not the metaphor over here. No, as we will see. The light is the presence of God. And there's a lamp here. There's a wick. That's the body. There's fuel. That's the oil, which is metaphorically good deeds. Not Torah. Why not? It's actually, we'll see, tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Um, why the oil and wick analogy? Eddie is asking, we'll see that tomorrow. Okay, very good, Vicky. Um, Jennifer, God is good, God is love. Why do some people push this away? I don't understand. Mm. Don't know how to answer that. Okay, folks, you're going to have to excuse me today. Oh, sorry. Um, I, I want to continue the conversation tomorrow. I um, actually, my apologies, I must end now. I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine, coming to you from Chabad, Zuchan, Kedish, Montreal, Canada, where it's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you, Tanya. We will continue conversation tomorrow. I'm sorry that uh, I, can't, I just can't continue now. Have a great day.